The Jazz Image uh, this weekend is celebrating the spirit and the legacy of Woody Herman. I'm holding in my hand a tome that uh, really covers, oh, just about the most uh, specific detail of Woody Herman's life. It's one of five biographies on the subject of Woody Herman, the latest, the leader of a band, The Life of Woody Herman, written by that prolific author, Gene Lees who has given us the singers in the song, The Cats of Any Color, his own newsletter, which is the jazz letter that uh, goes out around the world, and uh, the lyricist and translator of Brazilian themes, and uh, the man with a message on Bill Evans' wonderful waltz, the waltz for Debbie. Gene Lees, welcome into Minnesota Public Radio. Good to have you there. Well, it's good to talk to you. It's been a good many years now. Well, this tome took how long to write? Just Roughly, all, I can't say it was all done in one stint because I was turning out the jazz letters and um, other things as well. But the research went into it was seven years. And it uh, ends up uh, with the leader of the band and uh, your signature on February 8th, 1995. Yep. And you and I were talking the other day about the, the parallel rise of Woody Herman with Count Basie and Duke Ellington and Jimmy Lunsford. And a lot of people probably have said that Woody's band was not particularly innovative, but that's not true. No, it's not true. Actually, he was of a later generation. Duke was established by 1928. Woody really didn't get his band going well, despite the band that plays the blues. It was recording by the late 30s. But he didn't really become um, a star until the middle, almost the middle 40s. It was about 43, 44. And Duke, which was the first, Duke's was the first band I ever saw, and it electrified me, but he had settled into what he did by 1939. By the time, Woody was the first big, as far as I can determine, Woody was the first big band leader to commission an arrangement and a composition by Dizzy Gillespie, and he did that in 1942 when he was still recording for DECA. But by the time of 1944, 45, all the guys in the band, or all the guys, but most of the guys in the band were great admirers of Dizzy, uh, um, Neil Hefty, uh, Pete Candoli, they were all, and, and then part of the time, Conti Candoli, they were all great admirers of Dizzy, and they were bringing into the Herman Band the innovations of bebop, which Basie wasn't doing. Um, and one of the things I noticed... Um, repeatedly when I read the reviews on the book, which have been wonderful, I must say, and I'm very grateful, but that they all, almost invariably begin with saying that Woody Herman was not a band leader at the level of Duke Ellington and Count Basie, but, and then they go on and praise him. But the fact of the matter is that he was. Um, and by the mid, in the middle 40s, his band was far more innovative than either of theirs. And Basie, I'm still a Basie freak to this day. But Woody's band by the mid-40s, and Gunther Schiller has pointed his, this out in his book, The Swing Era, was one of the most innovative bands ever, and those charts still sound wonderful. And we've just uh, exposed the listeners here to uh, the woodchoppers and the New Directions compositions like Igor Steps, Four Men on a Horse, and Fanet, with its uh, great built-in humor. Yeah. Uh, the, that uh, small group within the big band uh, really was uh, something quite innovative, parallel maybe to John Kirby in a different way. Well, the, the, the phenomenon of the band within the band goes back to Isham Jones, um, when they had the Isham Jones Juniors, and Tommy Dorsey had his, what would they call it, the... Um, um, oh, the uh, Clambake Seven. Clambake Seven. Yes. Artie Shaw had a whole series of small groups named after um, um, New York City telephone exchanges. Uh, Gramercy Five. Gramercy Five was one of them. Um, yeah. And uh, that was the one that was best known, of course. But he had them for septets and various things. And they were all named after New York City telephone exchanges. But other people had experimented with that, um, and that's fine. Um, but Woody was beginning to take in all sorts of harmonically adventurous uh, material. Um, jazz is always harmonically borrowed from European classical music, um, and has always done it about 50 years after the fact. Um, I asked, I asked once, um, well, who's the band leader? One of the major band leaders. I said, why is it that the uh, all of these guys who went to conservatories in the um, in the 
twenties and thirties were very familiar with Stravinsky and Ravel and the rest of it. And I asked, I think it was Ernie Shaw. I asked, um, why was it that they didn't introduce this harmonic vocabulary into jazz sooner? Was it that the um, no, it was Mel Powell. I said, why was it that the, this vocabulary was not introduced into jazz earlier? Was it public resistance? He says, no, the band leaders resisted it. And Woody did not. Woody did not. And Woody was very open to this. Benny Goodman resisted it. Well, Benny Goodman never did get comfortable with bebop. Um, whereas Woody, but later Basie also did it. But Woody was the first to do it, to welcome the beboppers with open arms. He was fascinated by their innovations. And by the innovations that were being inspired by Stravinsky and other European composers. Gene Lees, uh, it is a pleasure to talk with you. Will you stay with us? And Absolutely. We'll, I'll, I'll call you back uh, out there on sunny west coast. Oh, is it ever today, too? Beautiful what, day. what have you got in the way of weather? Well, we do have some sun mixed with clouds and a little bit of frost. And uh, Oh, my goodness. And it's the weekend of the fishing opener, including Mother's Day, all packaged into one. Do you remember the weekend I met you in Minneapolis when I sang there with Warren Bernhardt in the middle of the winter? It was bitter cold, oh, I remember. It, and you sat in John McDougall's uh, recording basement studio. <laughs> yes, I remember. And warmed us up. Oh, boy. It was, it was the beginning of your Brazilian it was tour. the beginning of my writing songs. It, I didn't realize that. It was, uh, what I did up there was some of my own first songs. And then Warren and I went to Latin America right after that. And I met your beam down there. That was within six months of being up there with you. Well, Gene, we're going All to right. renew again in just a little while. Okay. All right, Lane. Thanks so much. Well, thank you.